Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. Uh, this time round, um, I've been feeling kind of nostalgic for a particular game series that is apparently going to be coming back by the grace of God, or should I say, by the grace of Sega. Now, this is a game that I have so many fond memories of. Um, I played the hell out of the demo of this as a kid, and it was it, it was quite a while after the demo actually dropped, and indeed that the game dropped. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was actually towards the end of the life of the system that I actually got my hands on this game. Um, I am talking about Jet Set Radio today. This game is an absolute underrated gem, and it embodies everything that the Dreamcast kind of stood for. It was loud, it had attitude, it was fresh, it was different, it was exciting, man. Like, that was how I sum up the Dreamcast. It was not just another, you know, plastic box that was white or black with a different bloody logo on it that played all the same generic games as every other box on the market. The Dreamcast and indeed consoles of the time were very different animals uh, and there were legitimate reasons for owning each machine now you know we all know the sad unfortunate demise of the dreamcast sega's complete and utter bullshit uh, and mismanagement had finally caught up to them um after years of terrible awful soul-destroying um decisions which was a shame because the Dreamcast was fantastic. And, you know, if... <sighs> if they didn't pump out the um, 32X and the... Was it the CD32 or whatever they called it? Or the Mega CD? Multi-Mega? The um, <coughs> uh, Mega Drive slash Genesis slash CD combo and all of the different add-ons and they didn't piss around with the Saturn. Maybe even if they just treated the Saturn like they treated the Dreamcast, maybe Sega would still be around uh, in a official hardware capacity. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, the last dying console of um, what many would assume was the, the golden age of gaming. And uh, to me, this game always embodied that and it was the first game that i can remember uh, in fact i believe it actually was the first game that used cell shaded graphics of course they didn't call it uh cell shaded graphics back then they called it manga dimension and it really was a striking game to look at now this game did actually get a sequel um it got a sequel called jet set radio future that was on the original xbox and that should probably have the award of the best um sequel probably of all time because it improved on this formula in every single way. The second game is undeniably far superior to this one. But that's not to say this one wasn't good. This one just had some, shall we say, Dreamcast jank is a term that I've seen coined in our Discord before. And uh, this game, yes, um, embodies that very much so. When it comes to the most important aspect the controls. This game has an absolutely killer soundtrack, which again was improved on a lot in the second game. The gameplay came on leaps and bounds in the second game. Um, so what is Jet Set Radio or Jet Grind Radio, uh, as it was called in the States? Well, it's a rebellious arcade skating sim. Now, Usually when you say something, uh, you know, based around skating or BMXing and stuff like that, you're going to think like tricks and stuff like that is the main focal point of the experience. Not here. In fact, although you can pull stunts and tricks and things like that, they're not really that encouraged from what I can remember because that the skates are just a um, way of navigating the environments, which actually can get quite vertical in places. Now, the main um, objective in this game is to spray graffiti. 
which actually was very controversial at the time. I remember this quite vividly. In fact, Sega actually, um, all, this game almost got banned from what I can remember. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm remembering that right. In fact, Sega actually has a splash screen at the start of this game, um, you know, mentioning that they do not endorse graffiti and blah, 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 stuff like that. Um, this game also has a pretty interesting and diverse uh, cast of characters as well with their own unique skills. And um, Yeah, so I've got some information on this game. Uh, I would say this is an extremely unique experience. Only This only could have been produced by Sega. Uh, the company that actually made it, uh, the developer Smilebit, was shut down, sadly, after Jet Set Radio Future. Um, and of all the Sega properties coming back, they appear to be putting uh, a big focus and most of the budget behind this game. And there's a lot they could do with it. But for me, they have to nail the controls. And I'll explain when we actually get into playing the game. I'll explain exactly where the controls go wrong. They are the weakest link. Uh, and it's a shame because this game is... It kind of lives and dies by its controls. Um, and while they're not completely broken and useless, they're not great either. But a lot of that is alleviated with using a modern control pad. Um, you know, well, the original Dreamcast turd control pad certainly did not help. Anyway, we've got some trivia here. So... Jet Set Radio was the first game to use cel shaded art style, which gave it a distinct comic book-like appearance. Yep, we've already covered that. Jet Set Radio features a diverse electric soundtrack composed by Hideaki Naganuma, which blended various genres such as hip-hop, funk, rock, electronic, and J-pop all together. Yeah, the, the soundtrack, honestly, guys, like... The soundtrack for this and the second game is in my Spotify rotation. It's that good. So Jet Set Radio allows the player to create their own graffiti designs or import them from the internet using the Dreamcast online capabilities. Now that's something that I never actually experimented with at the time because outside of a few precious moments when I used to take my Dreamcast over my mum's house, I didn't have um, internet access at my dad's. So, yeah, in fact, I never did. I think he's got the, yeah, he's got the internet now. He's got better internet than we have now, but he doesn't use it. <laughs> yeah, don't ask. Uh, so Jet Set Radio was originally released in North America as Jet Grind Radio due to a trademark conflict with a Canadian radio station called Jet FM. Interesting. I didn't know that. And that's important because the radio station called Jet Set Radio uh, is a focal point with DJ Professor K, who is that character there, who is a very important character in the Jet Set Radio universe. He is basically the outlaw pirate radio station where we get all of our information um, from and our mission briefs, if you will. And he introduces us in general to the world and the what's goings on of Neo Tokyo. So... Jet Set Radio received critical acclaim and is considered one of the best games of the decade for its graphics, soundtrack, and gameplay. It won several awards and was nominated for many others. Now, that... That goes against my memory. Uh, I remember the game being... sort of positively reviewed, but as with most Dreamcast games of the time, there were caveats. And like I say, the caveats were the controls. Jet Set Radio was re-released for various platforms in 2012 with improved graphics, new features, and some changes to the music and graffiti due to licensing issues. That's true. I do have it on the Xbox 360. Um, and I do have it on Steam as well. And to be honest, we're going to be looking at the Steam version because it just runs and plays better than the uh, Dreamcast version. We could spin this up on an emulator, of course, sure. Um, but there's little to no point in doing so. So, Jet Set Radio has a sequel, Jet Set Radio Future, which was released for the Xbox in, 20, uh, in yeah, 2002. Or should I say 2002? Stop being an idiot. It features a new story, characters, gameplay, and mechanics, and music. Yeah, also... Um, 
Jet Set Radio Future, I don't know how true this is, but in my mind, it was actually a reboot. It didn't, from what I can understand, now I could be wrong, but I don't think it was a continuation of Jet Set Radio. From what I can remember, it, it was just like <laughs> they redid the game like two years later um, and all the better for it because Jet Set Radio Future, man, going from the Dreamcast version to the one on the original Xbox. Yeah, talk about a glow up. So Jet Set Radio has a cult following, has influenced many other games such as Splatoon, Sunset Overdrive and Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Well, I mean, I'm going to take your word for that. Uh, I know it did start the trend of soul-shaded graphics in general, so that can't be denied. So anyway, let's pop over and have a look and answer the question. Is Jet Set Radio still good? Spoiler, yes. Yes, it's very good. Quite good, in fact. Most excellent. And there we go, Sega Heritage. Right, third time's a charm. <laughs> I've tried to record this bit like three times now, and, well, things aren't going to plan. Anyway, enough about that. Here we go, Jet Set Radio. It is loud. It is in your face. It's dripping with attitude. Uh, the very embodiment of Sega from the early 2000s, or actually the tail end of the 90s, literally. The music in this game is superb. And one thing I will say about the HD uh, upgrade, at least on Steam, is it really enhances the visuals because it's got that striking, um, bold colored kind of aesthetic to it with those thick lines, uh, especially the black outlines of characters and just any moving prop. Yeah, HD is the way to play this one. Anyway, let's go, let's hit up a new game. <laughs> and that is the one I've literally just done. I've literally just started that. Uh, so I guess we're going to make another save. And hopefully this game's going to record this time. Somewhere in Asia, there's a city that cannot be found on any map called Tokyo Tokyo. But everyone just calls it Tokyo. The two hottest things in the streets of Tokyo Tokyo are the punks wearing magnetically driven inline skates powered by newly developed Metrium batteries and Jet Set Radio, a pirate radio station manned by the DJ Professor K that plays nothing but non-stop hardcore music. Those street punks have been named Rudy by the people of Tokyo. They roam the streets and cover the city with their personal graffiti, claiming that it is their way of expressing themselves to the world. However, ever since the Metropolitan Government and the financial conglomerate, the Rupkata Group, combined their efforts to co-found the 21st Century Project, the streets of Tokyo to have never been the same again. Police crackdowns on the Rudies have become more severe, and Captain Onishima is more anxious than ever to put them behind bars. The streets of Tokyo To are ready to explode. All right. So here is Gum. She's going to show us the ropes. Hold it. You can't go tripping through the streets until you learn the basics. If you can speed up, oh, you can speed up if you hold down RT and jump by pressing A. We're learning the important stuff here. The foundations, and the foundations are the most important survival skills in this game. Very simple to start off with. So we have to follow exactly what she does. So we're playing as Beat. Beat was kind of the uh, front running character for this game. As we are trying to get these people to join us and start the um, gang known as the GGs. Which is interesting. Because... <sighs> this is kind of like where the gang formed. But the game kind of already implies that they're already a gang, so maybe this is a prequel. This is the before times. This is how they formed. I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking a video game. That could also be a thing too. So your gang does actually increase its member list quite a lot as the game goes on. Now this is a very, oh, we, f oh. All right, we cheesed it somehow. <laughs> okay, 
cool. Alright, now it's time to get serious. If you see something floating over your head, pull the left trigger to start spraying. Something floating over my head, you say? Okay. So, red arrows, pick up paint cans, spray the tag. Got it. Makes sense. Ah, oh, the music. God. Absolutely love this music. You know, I used to put this on at the gym all the time. It was so good. Really got you going. Anyway, so these are the basic simple tags. They only require um, getting close to them and pulling the tag button. Easy stuff. The bigger tags are a little bit more involved. Gum has joined you. Not bad, I guess I can join you. Excellent. And now we have Tab. Think you can keep up with me? Let's check your qualifications. All right. If you see an arrow, use the left uh, stick to follow it and paint some fat lines. Yeah, it, just, it doesn't really explain what to do at all there. So this is a medium sized tag and it's more involved. Now in the sequel, they got rid of all of this um, QTE nonsense, which is good because it can be a pain in the ass. So we've got to follow the arrows on screen with the analog stick. And if we complete the combo, we get massive amounts of points. Very important to getting the top rank. However, you can easily screw that up with what feels like no fault of your own. It's just dodgy controls. You think you're all that? Try this. If you grab onto the back of the car, you can slide uphill with ease. Press left back to break off. Yeah, so he's going to show us how we can latch onto the back of cars and get a free ride uphill. Problem is, there's almost no spot in the game that I can actually think of right now where you even would need to use that. Apart from maybe this level, but you don't really come onto this level very often. Not particularly that I can think of anyway. So we need to ride all the way up there, grab some cans, and roll all the way back down the street for one tag. Damn, son. All right, I think we can do that. Out of the way, love. I don't know why you're standing in the middle of the road anyway. Ooh, you almost got away from us. Now you'll notice that everything we do has a time limit, and the time limit can actually get quite strict. And the time limit for what I can remember is very important in actually uh, getting the top score. And there is a secret character that we need to unlock, or that we can unlock, by getting the top score on every level. We're going to fail. Oof, God, if we went too f much further over there, we would have failed that. Uh, but getting the top score on every level is, well, at least for me, Borderline impossible. Like, I can't even get remotely close to it. And my cat is trying to be cute and get my attention by picking up a spring and putting it on my desk. He's got these little plastic colored springs that he runs around with it in his mouth. His favorite toy. Go get it, boy. So now this is one of the harder parts of the training and this is actually quite challenging because the way you magnetically click onto rails when it works it works really well when it doesn't work it really fucks you over and it will fuck you over it's one of the biggest problems with the controls of this game apart from the momentum system you will fly off those um, rails at an awkward angle you will also magnetize to them repeatedly when you're trying to get away from them ah oh, yeah yeah I guess you're cool listen up bullets can't touch you when you're dashing got it I got it 
All right, Professor K, give it to us. What's going on? Hey out there, this is Tokyo's very own number one pirate power station, Jet Set Radio. Over the hood, through the streets, and right into your brain. We're transmitting our signal straight to you. Y'all got your antennas on or what? Yeah, we're riding high in a smooth stream of supersonic sound. And I'm your captain and DJ, Professor K. Jet Set Radio! Three games are fighting for the Tokyo streets. In the west, from Victor Show, the city of the night, we got those high-tech maniacs, those mad machines, the noise tanks. And in the east, from Kogane Cho, the city of the sunset, it's that crazy monster mask wearing gang, poison jam. And from Shibuya Cho, in the south, the city of daylight, it's those troublemaking punks, the GGs. Now that you're feeling the GG's home turf, Shibuya Cho was just a tap. Was it poison jam? They were talking about spreading out there. Or maybe it was the noise tank trying to send a system crash through the whole city. Listen up, all you innocent fools out there. Officer Onishima has got some special order. He's got some bracelets all ready for you. So get yourself to the bathroom and brush those teeth, boys and girls. Because a whole load of trouble is heading your way. <laughs> Indeed, Professor K. Yeah, Officer Onoshima, he is a dick, and he also has a massive cannon. <sighs> yeah, and it hurts. He's not actually in the second game either, which kind of sucks. They've replaced him with somebody else, but I do believe um, Captain Onoshima in this game is way better than the upgraded version in the second game. Anyway, so we can create graffiti. Um, we can mess with some settings, we can play with the radio, we can check out the internet um, options which don't exist anymore. And we can check the map. Also, that window there, if there are new challengers or people who want to join our gang, we can interact with them there and they will give us a mission or some kind of challenge that we'll have to overcome before they will join us. Anyway, let's hit up the first mission. We'll do one mission. And before we embark on a mission, we get to choose our character. So, we've got three to start with. We've got Beat, we've got Gum, and we've got Tab. Now, they all have their strengths and uh, weaknesses. So, you've got Power, Technique, and Graffiti. Now, Power is how much health they have. Technique is how complicated their graffiti is. And um, Graffiti, I believe, is just how many uh, spray cans they can hold. Yellow spray cans will give you one. Blue spray cans will give you five. And uh, if you collect the red spray cans, they give you health. So let's take B out, just because. Someone's busting into our turf. They're lurking around the bus route. Find the red arrows and start tagging. Oh, hell yeah. So the whole point of the game is to get each mission done as quick as you possibly can. Nice. But before we do anything, we're going to want to nice. pick up as much paint as possible. Yeah. That's given us a little bit. Now, there is a reason we're not just tagging away. And that's because every time we spray... Son of a bitch. Every time we spray... Um, that kind of raises our wanted level, sort of, which will make more sense as we go. So you want to kind of strategically get these tags done. Because in a minute, the cops are going to arrive and they're going to be hounding us from this area. So we want to get these big, complicated ones done first. Now, she is part of a rival gang called the Love Shockers, I believe. And I think they look really cool. So she's tagging up our turf, which ain't gonna fly, yo. There we go, the cops are getting involved. Yeah, well, I think by the time we finish this one, they're gonna arrive, yes. So here's the goon squad. Now these guys in, them, um, in themselves aren't too much to worry about. 
you can defeat them by spraying their backs. But there's not a huge point in doing that, to be honest. I think you do get some score. And there's Captain Dick. Now, you can see these other things floating around. They are graffiti souls. If we collect all of them, we will unlock uh, extra graffiti. But some of them are almost impossible to actually grab. Uh, which, so, yeah. <laughs> some of them I genuinely do not think it's actually even possible to get. I mean, obviously, that's hyperbole. They are possible to get, but very difficult. Now, this is where we're going to kind of suffer the controls of the game. Jesus. Like so. Just trying to get to where we want to go can be difficult. Because you'll get to a point where you run out of momentum. Where you just jump on the spot. Anyway, suck that. Now, if we spray his back, you've got to knock him over, I believe. And then you can spray his back. But if you do so... Uh, he will be paralyzed. I'm not sure if he gets over it or if he's kind of paralyzed for the whole mission. There's a graffiti soul that we can pick up. Now, I will demonstrate um, a quick way of doing this. So if you don't care about score, you can intentionally kind of back out and go into these constantly to advance the actual tag. But you will lose your score multiplier and this is actually like a speed hack um, of actually getting through these a lot quicker because if you actually try and do the combo it's a lot slower than just exiting and entering over and over and just doing the first part but you don't get the high score which completely destroys your chance of getting the top um, skill setting and you need to get jet on every level, like I said. You have to get jet to unlock the uh, hidden characters. And it is so difficult. But anyway, I mean, that's basically Jet Set Radio. Um, also, if you have enemies on your ass, sometimes you're just better off spamming the graffiti button and just doing the first symbol that comes up in and out in and out in and out until you complete the whole tag also if you do spam it that way uh it actually takes more paint more graffiti cans to actually complete the tag uh, every time you enter into a um tag and do one section of the painting that takes one can Whereas if you complete a entire series of um, QTEs, that will do a good chunk of it and only use one can. Probably explaining that really badly, but yeah, <laughs> it's kind of um, kind of complicated thing to explain, but it's much easier to show. Anyway, I mean that's basically Jet Set Radio. Um, the second game is very different. Shibuya Cho turned out to be the love shockers. Love broke their hearts, and now they're looking to do some breaking of their own. Watch out for these psychos. When you see their heart shaped graffiti around, you know someone somewhere is crying with the ooky ooky waku waku feeling. Can the GG save Shibuya Cho from the trap of love, or is it too late? Mm hmm. And that is where the demo ended. So that is where I'm going to end this video. So there we go, Jet Set Radio. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I have. Um, I love this game. I don't think I've ever actually completed it, though. The second game, um, we completed a few times back in the day, but this one, this one is rough. <laughs> it does get brutally difficult. So let me know what you think. And as always, guys, till next time.